Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, before we start, um, I want you to know that the review for the exam is going to be next week on Tuesday during our class time, and I will finish the review on Wednesday. So you don't have to worry about missing a class. So don't forget the review is going to be during our class time. Also, to continue what we were doing yesterday, this is the equation for beam cone. Um, this equation, they have been in the code forever. And here on the left-hand side, is this value, this is P to U, the factor axial low, and this is phi P to N. This depends on the K L over R, the largest one. If this is larger than the point two, the beam column behaves more like a column than a beam. And in principle, and whenever this ratio of P to U of P to P to N is smaller than point two, it's mostly behaving like a beam. And if you look at these two equations, they are almost the same. The only difference is that Whenever P to U over phi P to N is smaller than 0.2, we divide this by 2. And whenever this is smaller than 0.2, we multiply this by 9 over A to get rid of this. But in, in general, they are very simple. This value here, it is M to U, the factor moment, the largest one multiplied by a magnification factor to take care of the secondary moment produced by the axial load and the eccentricity. And this in here is phi m to n that depends on mostly L sub p and L sub r, as you know, and sometimes depends on the lambda. In the homework problem, they ask you many times about this portion that uh, if there is a moment in the y direction, this is m to u y, but also also multiplied by a magnification factor that is the same the same formula that we use in here. The phi m to n for, for the y axis, I haven't mentioned that. I'm going to uh, show it to you right now, and so in the, in the code in chapter f. I want you to go to page sixteen point one fifty six, and some of you that already been looking at the solution manual have seen this value, but on page six. 16.156, they had the eye shape, a Y flange, and channel bend about the minor axis. So this is moving about the Y axis. And of course, due to the shape, the shape of the Y flange. Whenever the moment is about the weak axis, we do not have lateral torsion on the back knee. So the only the only limited state that apply is the yielding or the flange local back. Because look, why why the web the web doesn't have local back knee? Anybody? Why do you think a, a wild guess? Why do you think that the web doesn't have a local back? It's mostly it's mostly because it's in the neutral axis. It's mostly because it's in the neutral axis. Very, very, very little, very little step. So the on, only two limited states that we have is gelding, so it will reach the the plastic uh, moment or 
1.6 day elastic moment. And also, we can have flange local back. But this equation is the one that I want you to pay attention. I'm going to rewrite it in a different way. Fy dy over Fy Fy equal to 1.6 plus more. So I had re written this equation and put it at 1.6. This is what, what we call the shape factor. This is the reserve capacity for the plastic for the moment about the X axis was 1.1, 1.2. So this is the plastic moment about the Y axis. This is the elastic moment about the Y axis. So it can let's see 1.6 because that is the maximum reserve capacity increases the capacity by 60 percent about this week ask. so you're going to find that the homework problems in the solution manual they use this just to indicate they have not exceeded this has to be a smaller or equal than this value but remember they're about the weak access there is no lateral torsion backlink. There is only yielding and flange local backlink because the web is in practically in the neutral lines. That's a clarification that I wanted to make this more. So I was saying that we had two equations in here. And um, we used to say H11 and A is controlling, H11B is controlling. And you already started solving the home, most of the problems in the book, this one control. But either way, we have to magnify the moment. And the reason why we magnify the moment is because we had eccentricity created by the column and created by the beam. It's called the secondary bending moment or the P little delta effect. Because remember, the P large delta effect that probably you're going to see it in concrete, this summer you take concrete or in the fall, that P big delta is whenever we have side sway. That's whenever we had the lateral movement, the lateral movement of the frame. So the formula in chapter H, they go with appendix number eight and appendix number eight on page 16.1249. And so in here we had, I mentioned yesterday, magnification factor, M to U multiplied by B1. This portion, we do not have it because we don't have lateral translation in the center we don't, we do not have side sway, the side sway that we look in a structure analysis. The same in here. Uh, in the next page, two things that you have to be careful on 16.1250. This is a magnification factor. Like I said, it, it's good for your homework for the X and the Y axis. And this is what I was saying, the P little uh, small delta, little delta effect because of the eccentricity created by the load that produces bending and by the load that produces the axial stress. So that creates a P little delta, that's the secondary bending mode. So what you have to be careful with this formula is the ratio M1 over M2. These are the moments at the end of the embrace length. M1, the smaller, M2, the larger. And you have to be careful with the single and double curvature because this could be a positive ratio or negative. And this here, the Euler, we're always going to use, we're going to forget about the little asterisk. We're always going to use, if this is, bending about the strong axis, this is Ix, 
This is KLX, but for your homework problem, bending about the strong and the weak axis, whenever you do the P E L Y, this is gonna be I Y, and this is gonna be K L Y. No matter what, this has to be larger than one because it is a magnification factor and not a reduction factor. By computation yesterday, it came as 0.6. We cannot use 0.6. This has to be larger or equal to one. This is one of the mistakes that I find all the time in the exam. People use something smaller than one, and also the ratio. And here they forget what is single and that I will correct. But this addition of the code has done a tremendous job in chapter six. Chapter six is an incredible chapter. Chapter six has all the section in the code. Just to give you an idea on this page. W40 by 264. No. I play again about PE1. Okay, I'm going to explain it all before I forget. It's going to be very difficult in your lifetime to use the W40 by 264. But every single section that is in chapter one, they had done the computation of the fee M to M. All of these are phi m sub n and the computation of um, phi p sub n. And everything depends on the embrace land or k l y. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to a. Section A, appendix A. I'm back. I'm back on page uh, 16. Point one to five. Uh, two questions about PE1. So I'm going to go here to PE1. This formula is good for the weak and the strong axis. Right? Um, we always, we're going to ignore this, or we, we're going to use the full, the full moment of inertia, complete, we're not going to reduce it. So, if we are dealing with a strong so with the x-axis, this value is going to be i sub x, because pi squared and e, they're constant. So, whenever you find it for the strong axis, like we done all day yesterday, this one is going to be i sub x. This is klx. This value is KLX, whatever we're finding about the strong axis, this is what we digest. For your homework, you're going to have a moment about the y-axis. So for the y-axis, this is here is going to be IY, and this is going to be KLY. This, this is related to the bending, with, the, with bending, not with the column behavior. So... If bending is about the strong axis, like we digested it, like we're going to do in a little while, this is I to X. And this is KLX. For your homework problem, you have bending about the strong and the weak axis. For your homework problem, you have to compute for the X axis the same way that I just described it to you. For the weak axis, this becomes IY. And this become K L Y. Uh, okay. Uh, come on. Okay. So remember, for your homework, you have to use this. The other question is about this. This is a magnification fact. So it's going to magnify the moment because of the secondary, secondary moment. So it cannot reduce the moment. So this has to be at least equal to one or larger than one. Sometimes based on this equation, yesterday I did an example that when I put the values here or everything, 
This came at 0. 0.6. We cannot use 0. 0.6. This has to be even if by computation it says 0. 0.6, we cannot use 0. 0.6. We have to use one because it is a magnification, not a reduction. Uh, okay. So uh, that was uh, about B1, the magnification. Okay. Now, look. I asked you yesterday to underline this. M1 and M2. When M1 and M2, that is uh, M sub U1 and M sub U2 factor, this is the smaller and the largest moment at the end of the embrace length in the plane of bending, right? So yesterday, Yesterday we had this case, right? I clearly remember that Celeste asked me the question. Look, there is a moment on the top, but there's no moment at the bottom. Right? So the moment diagram this is the shape of the moment diagram. This is the, um, the embrace length is 50. So um, this here, this thing here is M1, and this is M2. So zero divided by whatever is going to be zero. Now, is this single or double curvature in here? Uh, Adrian, is this single or double curvature? Single curvature, OK? So single curvature. The ratio is positive when the member is bending in reverse curvature. So, for the case, the moment that I just show you, Adrian, look, the ratio M1 and M2 is positive or negative? It's single curvature, so positive or negative? Look, the member is bending in reverse curvature and negative when? That's the way we decide on that. Good. Good answer. Any other question before I move? Uh, please feel free. So I just to, to show you something from yesterday. Yesterday, this is the same problem. Zero divided by this, so this came at 0. 0.6. And when I put that 0. 0.6 in this equation, it came at 0. 0.64. We cannot use 0. 0.64. We have to use this number. Cannot be used. We have to use one because it is a magnification. But sometimes, like you can see in this problem, it came as 0.64 is more than one. Uh, if we are not told which axis bending on, do we assume it on the major axis? Like the problem we went over yesterday. Look, we had 62 people taking the exam. Just to tell you, do you think they're going to be crazy enough not to put which one is the bending axis? It means that they're going to have different solutions. Remember what I told you in day one, I'm going to control the factors so we will have only one solution. Right? So 
Things like that, I have to tell you, God, I cannot let you assume. So don't forget that. Any other question? <laughs> oh. So I'm going to solve several problems today. And this is the first one. So whenever you look at a problem like this, the first question that you need to ask yourself, what type of problem do they want me to solve? Is this a column? Is this a beam? Is this a beam column? So anybody, what kind of problem is this? Bingo. And that's the right answer because we had an axial load and we had a moment. The moment could be at the top, could be at the bottom, it could be both, it could be a transversal load, but we have to understand it is a beam cone. And in here, we had the brace at the top and the bottom, 30% dead load, said different, the lightest W12. Right? And the service load is given at 236. And here, bending is about the strong axis. So what we have to do in here, W12. And it could be W12, W14, anything. We need to find the lightest, the lightest one in here, in this, in this family. So this is a W12. I need to find P to U and M to U. Because look, to go to chapter to chapter six, to go to the table in chapter six, I'm gonna put the table real quick. Yes, I have picked any, I have picked any table in here. Nothing in particular, but just to go into this table and they want a W12. So I'm going to go to the W. Oh, I open it by accident in W12. To go to this table and select a section for this program, what do I have to have? To go and select my first section, what do I have to have in here? Well, I need to have no piece of M, but it's piece of U. And M to U, right? And I have to have L to B. So to go to this to this chart, okay, I have to have M to U, P to U, L to B, and this L to B I'm gonna call also K L Y. Right? So this is the thing that I need to go to this. Uh, and based on what they give me, I could compute M to U, P to U, and I have that. So this is what I'm going to do right now. By the way, before I show you, this moment, the compression is going to be on the right or on the left side of my column in here. So I put a moment I had in here. I have a factor the low in here. So I have a factor of my load. The axial load is 700. The, this, this, is a different, this, is a, <laughs> this is a different problem. Oh, this is a different problem. <laughs> Let me check. And, Yeah, this is a different problem. I'm going to tell you here for this. 
Yeah, this is a problem. What I was what I was showing was the problem from yesterday. The problem from yesterday was what I was showing. This is the problem for today. It's there on page 32. So in here, this moment, the factor moment is given clockwise, clockwise, and PU is also given a seven hand. And I remember when I gave this problem a long time ago. People put the, the moment 160 and 160 in here. So they put it as a rectangle. So they put this as a rectangle. When we look here at the top and we see it, it clearly that the compression is on this side. What about here at the bottom? Where should the compression be? On the left or on the right? On the left. So and I know that some of you still have problem, have problem with the location of the moment because I have seen it in the past. I asked the question, everybody gave me the right answer during the exam, they reverse. So obviously we need to practice it about the location of this moment. But because of symmetry, it's very easy. The moment in the middle is gonna be zero, one four is gonna be 50% of this, Three, four is going to be also 80. So M, A, M, B, and M, C, they're very really easy to compute. And like I think the formal I me yesterday, this could be M, A, M, B, M, C. It makes no difference if we go from the top or from the bottom. It's exactly the same value that we're going to use. They wanted to check the value of 12 by 36. So this is a different problem. And the problem that I show you was the problem from just. So the value of 12 by 36. And they can tell you two different ways that it breaks. In certain textbooks, in certain um, uh, design manual, they tell you that the size way is prevent. That means brace. So everything that we do in this course is gonna be in place. So since they gave me a value to go for 136, I got this information. You can see I went to chapter one. I got the area, I got B over two times the thing is of the flange, H over TW, R to Y, R to X, ZX, IX, and X. Everything I got it from chapter one. Chapter one has everything in the window. What chapter one doesn't have is the PM to P, PM to R, L to P, and L to R. This one, where do we find this information? In which chapter and which table? Chapter one, page 23. The table for CS. And I noticed that people that took the course last semester, they always computed this with the formulas that we had in chapter F. This semester, you do not have to recompute this value because probably you're going to make a mistake. So you just go to chapter three, table CX, and you find this value. We will only compute this value whenever we had a built up section. Other than that, we'll get it. And also, if we do not have a built up selection, but we had something different than 50. I know that we're so used to our code that you just touch the page that you want and it shows up. This is only for 50. So if I give you FY65, you have to recompute this value because this equation
the equation, this equation, are, I know that you know where they are, space 15.1-48. So this equation here, this is non, it's non-linear because Fy is square root of Fy. You have to put a 65 in here. And you have to put a 65 in here and in here, but everything else, all the other properties of the geometry, you're gonna find it in chapter one with a section of this value that is a summation of one third B T Q. So going back to this, I got all this information from chapter one um, from chapter three. But remember, all of this is for FY15. So for this problem, for this problem, since this is given, all I need to do, go to the page when I had a W12 by 136 with 16 and find P M to N and P P to N. So in this page, chapter six, page 85, in this page, we had a W12 by 136. And um, my embrace length for this problem is 16 feet. W12 by 136 is given 16 feet. So this value is phi p to n, and this value in here is phi m to n. So from this table, since w12 of 136 is given, we find the phi m to n and phi p to n. And if we want, we can find also, as you know from the bottom of this, L to P, L to R, the cross section area, IX, IY, and R to Y, and R to X over R to Y. So, and the code already checked this value, so they are the same. You get it from chapter one, or you get it from the chapter. So I went with 16 to chapter 6, and I got this value, the phi m to n, and I got a phi p to n, and I compare, I compare here, this is p u and phi p to n, I compare these two values, and I compare these two values. And immediately, you have to do the p to u over phi p to n, 0.51 larger than 0.2 H11A control, the very first equation. So this is P to U over phi P to N that we computed in here, A over 9. This assumes the magnification factor is 1, 160. 160 is the largest moment. 160 is the largest moment, and P M to N P and to N count from that table. 0 0.69, 0 0.4 is more than one. This is a very heavy section. This is a section that is over designed because the best sections are the ones that they are closest to one. Sometimes 
this is the only section in that group that could work, but most of the time we could get a better section. So in your future life, you can with confidence find this section, and obviously this section, you know, they ask you if there's a better section, this section will work. Now, in this course, so you know where everything is coming from, we have to check what we call the column as a column first. So we call the column action, the column behavior. <laughs> and right now, K L R Y is controlling my design. But you have to pay attention because if there is a brace, K L over R A could control your design. As in you know how to design shouldn't be any problem. So in here, K is one. During the exam, some of you got the K factor wrong. And today in the afternoon, if I find time for this evening, but it will be today. I'm going to upload, I'm going to upload the solution to exam number two. Last night I created the folder for the, the final exam. I'm still I'm still writing the final exam, so I don't know how much time I'm gonna give you for question number one, question number two. I will tell you next week how much time you're getting question. But today I'm gonna put the solution to exam number two. If I don't do it in the afternoon, I do it in the evening. But it will be today. Some of you got this value wrong. So work in UK because we have to use K in here. And so K over Y is 60.7. All that we do, we go to the end of chapter four. Because in chapter four, we have for a whole bunch of different F1. If the F1 is not in chapter four, is the F1 is not in the charts at the end of chapter four. What do we do? Where do we go? Anybody, what chapter? If we don't have the FY, our FY, for the problem that we solve, what do we do? Because we cannot use the, what chapter do we go in the, what chapter do you go during the exam to find? The critical stress for you call chapter it says it by which letter of the chapter e exact you go to e and use the equation it could be inelastic or elastic uh flexural backlink so in this case this value is in the tape so by interpolation the critical stress 34 37 34, 37 times the gross area, 1371, uh, 44. Design strength. Look how good the tables are. The table cannot give you point something around that number. But look how great these tables are. But remember, you are not a table engineer. You are just an engineer, or you would be an engineer. So, doing the same piece of you that we already have. And divided by FIP is 1.51 equation H11A. So we already had 50%, over 50% working as a column. Now I'm going to check the beam. And the beam, you have so, so many problems. Remember, the, the only situation when we go directly to chapter 3 to table CX. And whenever we have full support of the compression flange, or whenever our embrace length is smaller than this back. So we can go directly <coughs> to chapter three, table here. But in general, we have to find which equation control my design. So I have to find my embrace length and compare it with L sub P and else to R. And this value is given, the 16. This, you can find it in chapter three or you can compute it. And so the same happened with M sub P and M sub R. M sub P and M sub R, they're given in chapter three. 
we already had found those values. Look. These are given in chapter 3, 892, 542. So, if you look at here, I have computed N sub P. And I have computed N sub R. But there are certain, certain cases that is not given in chapter three, we can compute it because we we know how to. The plastic module times any, any Fy, but we have to divide it by 12. 0.7 Fy, any Fy, this is the property of the cross-section, but we need to divide it by 12. So when we found the value, and also we need to check local battery, I haven't done it. Since our value of 16 is larger than L sub P, but the more than SUR, we have to compute C sub B. And I want you to compute C sub B. So, the lateral torsional buckling constant C sub B, 2.27. You're going to know that 2.27 is too big, it's large. So probably whenever you look at this number, you know P M to N is gonna be equal to P M to P. So if you're doing here the C to B, this is M to P in our equation, this is M to P, this is M to R, all of this multiply times embrace length minus L to P. L to R minus L to P, all of this have to be smaller than M to P. And just in case between parentheses and putting this, this value, you multiply time 0.9, give you the value that we obtain from the table. Look this value from the table in chapter six, seven, seven, three. It's exactly, it's exactly this value, the value inside this bracket, this volume multiplied by point. Why, why is, just to refresh my memory, <laughs> no use. Why is this, why this is the value given in the table and not this one? This is the one that we're gonna use, but this is one given in the table. Why is that? Anybody tell me. Chapter six, tell me this one. But I'm gonna use this value because phi m to n equal to phi m to p. Yeah, they are assuming c to b equal to one. That's a good answer, both of you. So they are assuming c to b equal to one. So this value is gonna be a little bit different because I say c to b equal to one. But in our case, like a general equation, nothing can be larger than m to p. So we had in here 0.9 times M sub P, 802.50. I need to compute the magnification, magnification factor. This is the equation. I already told you a hundred times that it had to be equal to one or larger. I wanna, one more time, 101 times. It has to be larger or equal to one is not a reduction factor. Look, 0. 0.6 minus 0. 0.4, the ratio M1 over M2. Look, is this single or the double coverage? When you look at it in the moment, single double, double. It's double, and the, the, if you don't remember how the rule is, it's because the moment is on both sides. The moment is on both sides. For the moment is on one side, single coverage. So what is the sign that I have to put?
Are you sure why I have made a mistake? Positive or negative? You're right. So look, this came at point two, three E one that people asked me before. <coughs> I square <coughs> E. This is I to, to X because bending is about the strong X. This is K L X because bending is about the strong axis square. We do not use K L over R in the past. Some of the old exam we use K L over R, but this is the same. You can write the Euler equation two or three different ways. So this is the Euler equation about the strong axis 96, 96 27. So and I put all of this into this equation. Point two, P is U over P E one X point twenty two. It's not a reduction factor, so I cannot use point twenty two. I had to use one. So I come to my equation. I already has computed this eight or nine one minute. Actual magnification factor one times mu over phi m to n that we computed the phi m to n we computed it here. It gave me 0.69 is smaller is smaller than one. So like I said before, the section is is too big, but they just wanted you to check this. Any question about this problem? Okay, I'm gonna start another problem because we have three minutes and you know that you can solve these problems in a couple of minutes. So this is the next problem. Whenever we have to select a section, so the problem is a little bit more difficult because we had in here a W10. We don't know W10 by 50, 65, whatever. A992 is still brace frame, that means KX equal to KY equal to 1. And in here, bending about the strong axis. So in, in the exam, I would put bending about the strong, the weak, and if I forget, Ask me, I will clarify. So this is the service law. Always had to check during the exam. We always had to check during the exam. What do you have to check during the exam? What do you have to check during the exam? I don't understand. Do we always have to check during the exam? Homo. What do you have to check? Always, always look. Uh, we, we are preparing an engineer, no technician, right? So you can tell the technician to use the table, the technician doesn't know um, the table is doing, only had a ruler, and you tell, go to a ruler, find me the section. Right? But we're training engineers in here with decision makers, leaders, and all kinds of stuff. So I do, I do expect you, if I give you a big column, I expect you to use the table in chapter six, definitely. I want you to check as a column, check as a bin. If I give you a problem in the exam and you don't do check, I'm not gonna give you a hundred percent. I'm gonna give you one or two points because you're a good table engineer. But you have to check column action, you have to check bin action, you have to check everything whenever I give you a problem. Any other question? We are out of time, but let me tell you, right? So we have to select a W10, but we had the dead and the live low. This means top and bottom, the moment. So I factor, I factor this, and 
the axial load is 300 and the moment 100. And you can see that this moment, it produces single curvature. And this is constant, C to B is equal to. On Monday, I'm going to continue solving this problem. I'm going to do more problems, and the review is on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. But during this remaining of the week, if you have questions, feel free to send me an email. I will come and I show you, help you as much as I can. Also, we had a, a, our tutor doing a great job. So just feel free to get in touch with us because time is flying. Next week is the last week of the semester. You're going to this class. And uh, I hope you don't miss it enough. To, I don't want to see you again in the summer. So do your best to solve this problem. But we're here to help. Any question about anything? I'm going to quit right now. Okay. No question. Uh, have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.